Closing cost. Every real estate transaction has some form of closing cost, but what are they and who pays them? Today I'd like to discuss that right after this. Hello, I'm Anthony, the Home Guy Waco, and each week I put together videos pertaining to real estate, Waco, and the surrounding area. Today I want to go into closing cost and talk about who typically pays what, what are we paying for, and what's negotiable. First, let's start with what the buyer typically pays in closing cost in a transaction. Buyers typically pay out 2 to 5% of the sale price of the home in closing cost. That includes attorney's fees. Even if they don't have an attorney, a lot of times the title company will have an attorney pull up um, all the documents that are needed and sign off on everything whenever the house is being closed on. So there is an attorney fee usually attached. Also loan fees. If the home is being bought through a mortgage, you'll have some fees from the lender such as loan fees, origination fees. If you're buying down any points, all of those fees are paid for by the buyer. Home inspections are generally paid for by the buyer, as well as any appraisal cost to go with the mortgage. That is typically a buyer expense. The buyer will also typically pay for a title search. Any escrow money that's put into escrow, that's a buyer expense. Buyers will also pay for the lender's title policy to protect the lender in case of any title issues. Um, but the buyer will typically pay that because they're the ones borrowing the money. And then any underwriting fees paid to the lender. Those are the costs that are typically covered by a buyer in the transaction. And on the seller side, the seller generally pays the commissions to the real estate agent. And the real estate agent that is representing them to sell the house generally gives part of that commission to the buyer's representative if they have one. Sometimes the person represents both parties. Not really a great idea because their loyalty is to the seller. Um, but if there are two agents, Generally, all of the commissions are paid for by the seller to the seller's agent. That agent then has an agreement with the buyer's agent to pay them a portion of that commission. Seller generally always pays for title insurance premiums, except for what we already spoke about with the buyers with the lender's policy. Generally, the seller will pay both for a policy for themselves, so no one will come back on them and say, hey, there was a problem. That insurance policy will cover them and also pays for a policy for the buyer to make sure there's nothing to encumbrance them in the future. The seller is responsible for any prorated taxes and HOA fees. And when I say prorated, you have an amount that was paid last year. The title company takes that amount, they have a formulary um, based on 365 days or 360 days, however they wanted to do it. And they figure out how many days we are into the year at closing. That amount of money is paid for by the seller and given to the buyer at closing. Same way with HOA fees. They're paid up to a certain date in advance, given to the seller, to the buyer at closing. And there's a lot of confusion that goes along with this. I've been in a lot of deals where at the end of the year, the buyer calls up and says, hey, why am I paying this whole tax bill? And we always have to go through their closing documents and say, hey, this is where it was credited to you at closing from the seller to you and you are responsible for 100% as the buyer of that property, but you were paid by the seller at closing. Also, a seller typically pays home warranty fees. If one is offered for the buyer, um, it's usually requested in the contract during the transaction, but the seller typically pays for home warranty fees. Most of these policies are for 14 months and will protect different systems within the house um, in case anything should happen in those 14 months right after closing. Um, it's just a nice way to protect the buyer and the seller for anybody to come back and say, hey, you sold this to me and it was faulty. Well, we have this warranty over here to cover any issues. Now, as I said in the beginning of this video, these are the typical parties who pay for closing cost. Any of this can be negotiated. Also, you have to understand if you're applying for a loan, how some of it's negotiated, how some of it is taken care of. For instance, with a VA loan, there are limitations on what a seller or a buyer can do for a seller if that is what's needed. And in this market, there are some buyers walking into the market saying, hey, I'll pay all of the seller's closing cost so I can win the deal. 
Uh, well, with a VA buyer, that's not exactly able to happen. Real estate agents and lenders can guide you through some of that process. Also, closing cost in an FHA loan. There are certain limits that the FHA will allow a buyer to ask a seller for, and anything above and beyond that, the buyer is responsible. So always check with the real estate agent and your lender to make sure what is allowable, depending upon your type of financing. But as I said, most things, as with anything in a real estate contract, is negotiable. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out. All my contact information is below and I'd be more than happy to assist you and give you any advice that you may ask for. Hope you're having a great day, and I'll talk to you soon.